We are rapidly approaching the end of me buying things from Museum Replicas. And the reason for that is, I have almost bought everything of theirs that I have ever wanted at this point. I only have a couple more swords that they offer that if it went on sale, I would buy them. And uh, honestly, this is actually one of those. So I had three, now I'm down to two. And I'm gonna open this up. So you know it's, you know it's uh, windless, uh, but you may not know exactly what it is. If you've been paying attention to the deals of the day, uh, then you might be aware of of what this is. Um, and I've kept my eye on this one for a while, and the only thing that's really kept me from purchasing it, honestly, was I just didn't really want to spend the asking price. Uh, so when they when they offered it at the sale price on the you know 50% off deal of the day, I couldn't turn it down. I will note, it has this hole in it where a piece of the sword is poked through. The, uh, the box being perfectly rectangle, can, you can see it popping out right there, uh, kind of pokes right through. So that's not the best packing job ever. But, let's get this out. Okay. It's just tearing, there we go. So, um, this is one of the last one of the last few swords that I would get from Windless, and uh, it's worth noting that I've actually gotten all of the medieval swords that I've ever wanted from them um, at this point. So a lot of what's left is kind of more modern era, I would say 16th century and beyond for the most part. Um, but I really think that this one's always caught my eye. I've just never really had the uh, the desire to buy it again at the full price, but I still think it was a, a very nice looking sword. So when it went on sale, I was very excited. So if you're seeing the, the hilt of this, you may be aware of what it is already, if you've paid any attention to, to their products. Uh, but I'm gonna do what I always do, which is separate out their scabbard from the blade and look at the scabbard for a moment. And I'm handling the blade a lot less uh, cautiously because uh, this sword in particular, you cannot get them to sharpen it. Um, they don't offer sharpening service on it for whatever reason. They're very explicit about that. I think it has to do with the size of the blade because it is a thinner blade. Although they were willing to sharpen the other rapier style swords that I picked up. So I don't really know what caused them to make that, de that decision on this particular um, sword, but that's the way it is. So I'll probably end up sharpening it myself because I do want it sharpened, um, so I can mess with it. All right, let's see. I mean, of course, there's not gonna be a lot to say about the scabbard, although they have done some detailing work on the throat and shape of it. Uh, so you can actually see a little bit of an etching in there on both on both bits. And, uh, and it's, well, it's not really etching, it's more like a molding, but it's got this kind of nice flowery pattern that you would kind of expect from a, you know, Renaissance era style sword. Um, but this, this is the sword covered in the requisite amount of grease that they do. Got a little bit of a foam on handle that I need to take off. I can. I love when they wrap it in tape like that. So. There we go. All right. So there it is. This is what they call the Pilsen Rapier. Um, and it's a very interesting blade. Um, I really like the way they do the knot work. And I think that the way they do the Ricasso is very interesting. Of course, you can see it is a thinned out Ricasso on the blade. And it's a little bit weird because you can see that that, that thinned out part isn't really supported by anything. Um, and so I don't really know what to make of that. I'd have to look a lot at the historical model for this one. Uh, but there's just a, there's a lot of nice detailing in this sword, which is what I like. Uh, they have a nice little braiding of wire. Uh, down here near, near the pommel. This is a screw pommel, um, so it is not peened. Uh, and 
I, I did read some reviews on it back in the day, and I haven't spent a lot of time researching it since, although uh, when I saw it on the deal, I knew immediately that I wanted to pick it up. Uh, what is interesting about this particular rapier, is, as one person pointed out, is that it's kind of rapier, and it's kind of like a side sword. It's, it's a little bit of both. Um, and so you'd, you could almost call it a transitional rapier where you were getting away from a lot of the larger hand guards and moving more towards something like a small sword or a side sword. And it has the very, very wide uh, cross guard or quillen, um, which I think is very interesting. And one of the other things I remember reading, and I'm, I'm noticing it, so it's very true still today of, of this design, is that the Ricasso piece is very rectangular, and so it kind of digs into your finger. I, I read that, I wasn't sure how much I'd noticed it, but I, man, I really do notice that. They, they could round off the edges there a bit. But that is it. Um, it is one of the few swords I thought was really, really fascinating, and I, one of the ones that I really like visually from Windless. Uh, like I said, they didn't sharpen this one, so I'll have to sharpen it myself. Um, but the blade looks nice. Uh, like I said, it, it's very strange. It's very strange with this Ricasso. And I would say the one thing that I, I don't know, again, I have to go look at the historical model for this, um, but the one thing I do find really strange is the way they make the transition from the Ricasso to the blade. And I, I use Ricasso there very loosely because, quite honestly, it looks like an exposed tang. Uh, it's designed like a tang. It has shoulders up here, and there's even a Ricasso piece uh, past where that shoulder is. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know enough about those kind of uh, you know early Renaissance to you know mid to late Renaissance style swords. They're not my forte, and I don't really know enough about the historical model to be able to speak intelligently about it. So I'd like to kind of see the way that was designed. But I just find this one very fascinating, and it's a good thing to add to my collection. Let's see how it fits in the scabbard. So the scabbard goes down over a part of the Ricasso, fits down into that, and look, it actually fits fairly snugly. doesn't fall out. That's three for three if you're keeping count. Um, <laughs> as much grief as I've given Windless over their scabbards, I seem to be buying all the right swords from them these days. I'm not going to leave that in there too long as I want to take the grease off of it before I, I leave it in the scabbard too much longer. So there you have it, the Pilsen Rapier. It was a deal of the day. I thought it was perfectly worth picking up uh, at the requested price point. I'm not too sad that I did either. Uh, so one more thing to add to the pile of my backlog of swords to review. Um, there will be more to come, although I am going to slow down some of my sword buying for the foreseeable future. So I am working towards buying a new house. Uh, so you're going to see less swords coming in as unboxings, and you're going to hopefully see more reviews uh, be kind of the regular content. So until next time, have a good day.